Hello, Oscillator Sync here. We are back with my old friend, the Op6. And today, what I want to talk about is a particular feature of the Op6 that I think is maybe sometimes overlooked a little bit, uh, even though it's an incredibly powerful sound design tool, and that is the operator level key track. So the operator level key track is a per operator feature and we can get to it uh, by coming over to our level uh, screen here. Um, first click, we get the, uh, the general level and the envelope generator. And if we hit it a second time, we get to this operator level key track page here. This is a feature which is lifted directly from the DX7. So like a lot of things on the DX7, it can come across as a little bit esoteric and arcane, but it's really not uh, too complicated. All this is, is a way for us to modulate the level of our operators, whether they are working as modulators or carriers, based upon what key we're pressing at any particular time. There are three controls across the top that are the ones we really kind of need to be most concerned with. Uh, and the first one we'll talk about um, is center. So center allows us to put um, the, the center point for our modulation. Basically what that means is whatever note we set this to, so I'll set it to maybe C5 here. Um, C5 will uh, be uh, the level that we have our slider set to basically for that uh, operator. Anything below C5 is going to be modulated either positively or negatively as we move further away from C5. So if we set this to maybe like minus 20% uh, here, um, and I'll just show you here. So this is doing it on the uh, carrier here. So it'll be affecting the level of our sound. So C5 here, and as I make my way down, you can hear that it's literally getting quieter. If I make this percentage higher, let me go to 50%, you can hear that it gets quieter much quicker. And it's basically silent by the time we get to the bottom there. And uh, similarly with high, if we turn this up, uh, maybe turn this down, it's easy to hear. Um, C5, it is as it is. And as we go further away from C5, it's gonna get quieter. And of course, if we do that with our modulators, that's going to be affecting the timbre as we move across the keyboard as well. Just quickly, the final two controls here um, allow us to change the curve from being a linear curve, which means that it's going to be um, reducing linearly as we go down the keyboard to an exponential curve, which means it's going to drop off very quickly. And then once it's got to a particular point, it's going to not really drop off much, much more after that. So we can play with those a little bit to find exactly the right response that we want. But that's all very well and good. But what can we use this for? What creative purpose does it have? Well, there are kind of two main ways that I tend to use it. The first is to do with finessing the response of a patch to make sure that it works well across the whole of the keyboard so it sounds good no matter where you play it. The second one, which is maybe a little more um, exciting, is that it is a way to essentially create multi-timbral patches on the OP6. And we're gonna take a brief look at how we can do both of those things now. So let's start with this little patch here. Uh, it's a really, really simple two operator, um, straight one-to-one -one FM sound. Pretty much just the initialized patch, actually. Um, if we go down to the bottom of the keyboard, we've got that cool uh, classic FM bass sound. It sounds like a Mega Drive, perfect. Um, as we go further up the keyboard, this octave, it's kind of working okay. Maybe starting to sound a little bit cheesy, or more cheesy, <laughs> uh, as we go further up. And as we hit towards, especially up here, with the very top octave, we're kind of getting to that place where um, people would complain about FM synths sounding glassy, harsh, uh, artificial, cold, all of those kind of bad adjectives that FM gets lumbered with unfairly. So what can we do to make sure that this patch actually works across the whole the keyboard? Well, I guess we could just say, just play it in the lower octaves. That's cheating. Um, so this is where we can use our operator um, level key tracking to bring down the amount of um, FM being uh, imparted on the sound by our modulator as we go higher up. 
So we're going to want to come across to our um, modulator in this patch, which is operator 2. And we're here in the level EG um, page already. And really what we want to decide is at what point does this patch become less than great, basically. Um, I think it's probably as we sort of hit along um, C4 here, which is the, the default, luckily for us. So to make this um, patch work a little bit more sensibly um, in the upper octaves, it really is as simple as finding that break point here and just lowering the high amount here so that as we go further up, the amount of modulation is going to lessen. We probably want to come all the way up to the top here and we can literally just drop this down until we get to a sound that's more palatable. Much nicer. And as we come down, we find our FM bass. It's still waiting for us down here. You can actually use your level tracking here to push the operator level beyond 100% as well. So we might decide that we want more of that FM funk happening here in the lower registers. Here we have much less modulation. And now we have a patch which does what we want across the whole range of the keyboard. Right, so I have a patch set up here with a user algorithm, but it's a really, really basic one. Um, operator one is a sawtooth wave. It's just a carrier. It doesn't have a modulator. It's just essentially acting like a sawtooth oscillator. Uh, operator 2 similarly uh, is a carrier with no modulator and it's a triangle wave. So it's just basically again acting like a triangle oscillator. Um, operators 3 and 4 I will come back around to um, in due course to explain um, how they're set up and why it's important to have them set up that particular way. And my goal here is to create um, two different multi-timbral patches. Um, the first one will be a bitimbral patch using um, splits with maybe a little bit of fade between the two layers. So we have different sounds on different parts of the keyboard. And then we'll also make a tritimbral patch where we have three different sounds spread across the keyboard. Now these are obviously very um, basic examples, but hopefully you'll see how these concepts can be applied um, more or widely and more powerfully uh, in other patches as well. I should also say that I am showing you this to kind of set some groundwork for another video I want to do um, soon, which is uh, finally getting around to talking about turning the OPSIX into a drum machine. And for a drum machine, we're going to need different sounds across the keyboard. Um, we'll be making use of some of these techniques. So to start with, uh, let's set up the patch so that the sawtooth wave is on the low notes and the triangle wave is on the high notes. And obviously if I turn both of these up at the moment, we're just going to get them blended together across uh, the keyboard. So um, what we can do, and this is a really simple idea, um, is if we come over to operator one, which is the one that we want to have just on the low part of the keyboard, and we come into the operator key trap here. Um, I'll leave the center set to C4 at the moment, and we'll turn our sawtooth up. And what I want to do first of all is just create an absolute keyboard split so that everything this point down is going to be a sawtooth wave and everything this point up is going to be our triangle wave. And it's a really, really simple thing to do. All you need to do is choose your split point as your center. 
and turn the high slope to 100% negative. Now when I go above that point, nothing plays anymore, but below here, we get our sawtooth wave. Now if I turn my uh, triangle wave up here, of course, we're going to hear it in this higher area of the keyboard, but it's also going to be playing down in the low bit as well. We want to stop that from happening. Basically apply exactly the same idea. We'll come uh, on to operator two. We're going to want to set our center as being um, one note higher than our low note split. Um, and then just set the low to minus 100%. And now, triangle stops here and the sawtooth takes over. Now obviously this is a really, really basic patch, but um, you could certainly set this up with um, three operators on each side of the split. And because of course the OP6 is not just an FM synth, the amount of work that you can get done with three operators is pretty immense. Um, so that's, that's really not a restriction. You can create very, very interesting um, by timbral patches um, that are very, very powerful. Now, in this case, I've made it an absolute keyboard split where the sounds cut off either side, but we don't have to do that. Um, if we reduce the, um, or rather increase the low slope on operator two to maybe like uh, 80% and the high slope on operator one, similarly, uh, we get kind of a fading crossover. So we've still got a bit of sawtooth, perhaps 80% is a bit extreme. Perhaps we'll try 70 on both, like that. So we have a point here where the two are kind of fading into each other. Still some nice hollow triangle there. And by there it's basically gone. So, we can create those sort of crossovers in our keyboard splits, or we can have them set absolute um, as well. And perhaps I'll leave it that way just for a moment. So, by timbre, that's really, really easy. It gets a little bit more complicated if we want to try, try timbre, but we can do it. Right, so it's time to talk about these uh, last two operators here. So um, operator three is a modulator and operator four is the carrier, the thing that we hear. But the way they are set up um, is that operator three um, is just a noise generator um, and operator four um, here is just um, a peaking EQ, so I've just got on the effect mode here. I've turned its oscillator mix down, so we're not hearing any of Operator 4's oscillator itself. We're just using it as an EQ and something else, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, you can do this with a number of the effects here. So the uh, peak EQ, the shelve EQ work fine. Um, the wave shape with stuff turned down sometimes works okay. The only, the other thing you can use is if you come into the filter and use a high pass filter and set its pitch um, to be fixed and turned all the way down, that works as well. And that's the way you had to do it before um, version uh, two of the firmware, but it's probably easier, honestly, if we just use a peaking EQ uh, these days. So my goal here, and it's practically a, a silly goal, but it's an easy one to hear, and it is just an example, is to, um, sorry, <laughs> come back to our original patch here, have our sawtooth uh, in the bottom octave, have our triangle up at the top here, but for an octave in the middle, around here, um, I want to just have noise. So saw at the bottom, triangle at the top, and then an octave in the middle with noise. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'll leave the noise turned down, is make space for that octave in the middle. So all we need to do here um, is come into our upper operator, which is operator two, and just move our center up by an octave. So I'll move up to C sharp five. So now we should have sawtooth, silence, which is where our noise is gonna go and the triangle comes back in here. So we're going to slip 
the noise in this gap here. Right, so I'll turn up my two operators dealing in noise, and indeed, now we have noise in the gap here, but of course, we also have it everywhere else. So we want to try and fix that. Now, one way you can kind of do this um, if we come down to operator four, which is the carrier, the thing that we are hearing, um, if we set our um, center point, uh, I guess uh, F sharp is probably where we want to set it. Uh, maybe G, um, I'll try G. Um, set it here and then come down to where we want the split to happen and just lower this to where we kind of can't hear it. And similarly, if we come up to the top here, just lower it until we can't quite hear it. Um, then we have kind of created a split where we have our noise in the middle here, but unfortunately it drops off pretty rapidly from that center point. So it isn't really a, a split, it's more sort of, it's one note that works really, and the rest of them are, are almost unusual, unusably quiet. Uh, changing the, um, the curve could help us. So the, the curve is a little bit more useful there, but it's not perfect. So obviously this is not going to create a proper split, if you like, where the, the levels of things are consistent within the, um, the area of the keyboard. So let's set these um, back up to zero. We'll just set that back to C4. Now, obviously it's easy enough for us to um, take it out of one of the sounds. So um, if I um, set that to C sharp four as the triangle used to be and set that to 100%, we've taken the noise out of the saw. Noise kicks in here, but it's going to um, interrupt the uh, triangle wave as well. So this is why you have to kind of use two operators to do this. So um, because we are essentially using operator four as a transparent VCA, it's not affecting the sound of the incoming operator at all. What that means is that we can use the uh, modulators level scaling to deal with one half of the split and operator four's level scaling to deal with the other half of the split. Uh, so you kind of have to waste in inverted commas, an operator in order to get this three-way split. Um, but again, the OP6 is incredibly powerful in terms of what you can do with each operator. So actually, to be honest, in a lot of patches, you might just have an operator left over anyway that you can just use as one of these transparent VCAs. So um, operator four, we've set up the level scaling to deal with the top part of the split. If we come to uh, operator three, we can now use it to deal with the top end of the split. So we need to set the um, center to be the end of our split here. So back up at C5, we leave the low set as it is, but we set the high to minus 100. And now we should have sawtooth into noise into triangle. A three-way multi-timbral patch with splits. Obviously a pretty dumb example of one, but hopefully you can see how this can be applied to your patches to get that multi-timbrality that the OP6 apparently doesn't have. Anyway, I hope that was useful and interesting and you can see how you might be able to apply it in your own patches. If you did enjoy the video, then um, a thumbs up like is always massively appreciated. And as I mentioned, I am going to take this concept and use it to turn the OP6 into a drum machine in a future video, uh, hopefully 
not too uh, long from now. Uh, so if that's interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well so that you don't miss that. And, you know, if you're feeling particularly uh, op 6 -y, then um, maybe even click the bell so that you get the notification so you don't miss it. Other than that, I hope you are enjoying your op 6, especially if you managed to snag one recently in the great uh, reverb fire sale of 2022. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.